I, I want Jesus to be seen and heard, and that's what I'm all about. Amen. Good morning and happy Sabbath to everybody. Are you glad to be in the house of the Lord and alive? Amen. Thank you, sir. You almost had me go back to my Sunday roots. I was going to get up, but I have to behave myself because I'm in church. Hello, somebody. It's good to be here. And like Orville said, I had made plans to fellowship with another group. But the Lord said, this is where you need to be, and we have to be messengers for the Lord. And I've been here before. Your pastor's an amazing guy. And I met some folk a few weeks ago uh, for, at a function. And I'd like the couple to stand up. You know who I'm looking at. Come on. These are brave people. They came into a workshop of mine. If they have not recovered, pray for them. They're going to be fine. Good to see you guys. Amen. Amen. And I believe, were there children? Your sons were here? Were the twins? Come on. Don't be ashamed of your family. Stand up. Oh, and this is the daughter. Praise the Lord. We'll see you afterwards. I've got some things I need to share with you guys. It's good to be back in Midvale, and um, your, your elder and I are still friends. If you have your Bibles, please turn with me to Matthew 25. What book did I say? Matthew 25. I'm going to look at verses 14 and 15. Some of you know this passage of scripture very, very well. Matthew 25, 14 and 15. And by the way, I give you greetings from my lovely wife who couldn't believe what I told her. I'm going to Tucson and she said, what? But she's okay. She still, she still lives with Jesus and she's, she's, she's fine. All right, Matthew 25, 14 and 15. And the Bible tells us this, and this is Jesus speaking in verse 14. For the kingdom of heaven is like a man traveling to where? a far country, who called his own servants and delivered his goods to them. And to one he gave five talents. Is that right? Yes. We'll make sure we're reading the same Bible here. To another two and to another one, to each according to his own what? Okay, I like to hear the saints reading scripture with me. To his own ability and immediately... He went on a journey. I'm going to stop right there. Now, if something happened this morning, you should have a coin that was given to you. And if you don't have one, someone be kind enough to dip into your, give, give one out of your pocketbook or what have you. But I want to see the coins this morning. Show, show. If anyone did not get one, it's not because we didn't love you. We may have run out of money. You know what I'm talking about, right? Amen. I want you to hold, you've never ever met this particular coin before. Is that right? You didn't because I had it. You didn't. But this particular coin is going to talk to you in a way that you've never heard before. No, I don't expect it to verbally do that. I'll do the talking, but you understand what I mean. But before I do that, I need to pray. Dear loving Father in heaven, this is your moment. This is your time. We are your people. You have something to say to the preacher in the pew as well as those that are here. Speak to us so that we will listen. We will be changed. And we will be ready for you when you turn up again, which is sooner than we expect. Even so, Lord Jesus, come. In his precious name we pray. Amen. If I were to ask you what the following names or terms have in common, what answer would you give? Bill Gates. Okay. Alan Greenspan, the New York Stock Exchange, the Dow Jones, mutual funds, investment portfolios, which most Adventists probably don't have, tithes and free will offerings. What do they all have in common? Money. Moolah. I don't care what you call it. Change. Money. 
Today I want to use the parable of the talents in two ways. Number one, as a backdrop for us to bear in mind the import of what Jesus had to say about the use of time and resources and its connection to heaven. Secondly, I want to use it as a springboard into the future which challenges each today. How many of you are challenged by today? Some of you are not being honest. How many of you got challenged this week? How many of you were a challenge this week? <laughs> I just knew, never, no one's ever, you know, honest about truth. What do we do with money? We invest and utilize the most important com precious com commodity called life into something that will last or something that will be lost. You've got a coin. I want you to hold it in your hand like I'm holding this. I want to see it. Take a good look at it. You've never met before, but now it's going to talk to you through me. If you hear anything coming from the coin, you need to put it down and listen to me. <laughs> hold it carefully and hold it well, for what you have in your hand will be the sermon. It's about you. Yes, I am going to get up close and personal with you. I don't have to know your name. All I know, need to know is you are a human being. Are there human beings in the room? Yes. Some of you didn't put your hands up. I'm scared. <laughs> the coin you hold in your hand is about you. It's about me. It's about us. This is an object lesson I hope you will never forget. And by the way, you can keep the coin and somehow the Lord will replenish my stock. <laughs> the coin you hold in your hand represents your life. What did I say? Life. I want you to repeat after me. Spent, spent. And, saved. and saved or spent, or spent. And, lost. and lost. Spent, spent. And, saved. and saved or spent, or spent. and lost. I want to share with you several powerful, provocative lessons about life and its eternal co consequences from this simple coin you have in your hand. Are you with me? Yes. No one can say, preacher, you didn't talk to me because you got it right in your hand. In Numbers 22, 8 through 30, 28 through 21, and we knows that uh, the story of Balaam I'm not a dumb donkey, I am a human being. And he had the good sense to listen when he got stuck in a stiff place. How many of you have been stuck in a stiff place? Not all of you are being honest. Okay? Yes, God will speak through any, by any means necessary, even a donkey. Bless that blessed donkey. Pray for the prophet. Pray for the church. Jesus in the parable has indeed taken a long journey to a faraway place, but he's coming back according to the text, just like any honorable, sensible, responsible, and accountable businessman. What will our time cards on earth show when he turns back, when he comes back? What will we do with the 220.15 million seconds? the 88.5 million minutes, the 6,011.5 hours, the 25.5K days, the 3.6 thousand weeks, the 40 months, and three score if by virtue of strength or we're older, we're still here. How many of you are glad that you're still here? How many of you got mixed feelings because you got kids and you're still here? <laughs> Hello. Don't worry, kids, we're going to get them back. So too are our lives. We, they must have shape, form, substance. They are to be handled with care. Say care. Yeah. I'm one of those preachers that like to talk, and I like to hear something back. Yeah. They're to be handled with care, and they exist, as it were, for a purpose. Genesis 1, 26 through, through um, 30 says... How God stoops down in the dust of the ground, designs, shapes, molds, 
clay into something that is physically and symmetrically well-defined, well with everything else. We are made in the image of God. Let no one ever tell you anything different. I've counted, I heard seven, eight, seven or eight amens. I'm a black preacher, so I'm from a Pentecostal. I don't keep quiet, even as an Adventist. So when I look at you for a minute, just go back with me. I'm an Adventist. Don't make no mistake, but there's some things I just don't want to get over. So you pray for me. God gets up and gets close, and he kisses Adam, and God echo, and from his lungs... He breathes life into every human being. The first God thing God tells Adam to do is to be useful. Hello, fellas. Mm -hmm. The women won't say amen because they know what they're going to get when they go back home. But hopefully that's not your home. Can a lady say amen? amen? But Eve had her job too. He wanted his church to be useful. Practical, on time, with the times, not behind the time, but ahead of time, because we know prophecy. Is that right? Amen. Amen. The question you must ask yourself this morning, does my life or my coin have shape, form, substance, purpose, or am I existing and just wasting time, space and energy, serving no purpose, moving, going along, but going nowhere? I don't care how old you are. Jesus said in John 10:10, 10, 10, I have come that thou may have life and have it what? More abundantly. There's the coin in your hand. Lesson number one, have purpose. Are you here by mistake or are you here on purpose? How many of you believe that? Let me see that. Jesus says, I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Even after sin, there's the possibility, the probability, and the willability, if there's such a word, that Jesus is coming back and we will have life eternally. Amen, somebody. Amen. Lesson number two, that was lesson number one. Take a look at the coin one more time. Well, several more times. How many of you says it has two sides or how many of you say it has three? Who says three? Who says two? Don't be afraid twos, don't be afraid. I am going to stop you from being embarrassed. How many of you say two? Okay, the sanctified minority, that's okay. God gives the penny substance, can you feel it? Yeah. Are you touching it? Yeah. Is it real yeah. or is it imagined? If it's imagined, you need help. Lesson number two, how, the fact of the matter is, none of you were wrong. The coin has two sides and an edge. Some say two, some say three, doesn't matter. But when you look at the coin like this, take your coin and look at it. Because no one's going to sleep during this sermon. And when you do it like so, can you see either side? No. Do you know whether it's up or down? No. Did you live a week like that this week? It's not good to lie in church. When you look at the sides, they tell you which, coin, which one is up and which one is down. On a coin, you will almost never find head and tails on the same side. There's something different elsewhere. Life like the coin depends upon which side is up and which side is down. Amen? Amen? The private and the public and the closeted and the open and the authentic or false, the good and the evil side, they're both there, either side. How many of you had a difficult week this week? How many of you were the cause of that difficulty? I don't expect anyone to put their hands up. <laughs> I got some honest people in the house. However, it's interesting that when you look at the coin this way, huh? The coin has two sides that suggest it must have balance. Say balance. balance. Jesus tells Matthew in Matthew chapter 16, like trees, we in time shall be known by the fruit we bear. 
And if you don't think that you're a fruit bearer, look at your kids. Or look at yourself in the mirror. Which side of the coin of our life do others see? Here or elsewhere? Which side of the coin does God see when no one is looking? An imbalanced life will show an imbalanced God with a small g. How do we get our lives in sync with God? Proverbs 3, 5 and 6 says, Trust in the Lord, not your looks, your education, your youthfulness, the scripture you know, spirit of prophecy quoting, preaching ability, Adventist genealogy. Did the preacher say that? Yeah, I'll say it again. Your Baptist Whatever you came out of or came from, your network of friends, which university you went to or did you drop out of school, or the size of your, port, your portfolio, which shows your investments. In Isaiah 64, verse 6, God is not impressed with our resume, for all our righteousness is like did, oh, someone said it. I, I, I just know the Lord is in here. Filthy decomposing menstrual rags. Yeah, I, I'm, I, I'm going to take. I'm going I'm to be. I'm preach to this one because this is what it is. He is no respecter of persons. When we know and acknowledge who God is and who we are not, then we recognize. Well. I might be on the rim. I could be up and down in a moment. Some of us came in up. Some of us came into this room down. I'm not sure sometimes when I go to church which way I, which way, which, 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 what I'm facing. I asked my wife, what, what are you looking at? She said, you really don't want me to know right now. Do you really want to know? And your spouse can be very honest or your children. Amen, somebody? Okay. You can't tell. When it's like this, you can't tell what side it is. It can be unsettling. You're not sure how to deal with or evaluate what the coin is about or what the human life is about when you see it from a different angle. Amen? Amen. So to his life, our fallen human nature without Christ and his spirit, his life directing spirit, we send out many messages. How many of you heard them this week? How many of you saw them this week? How many of us were them this week? In the life of a Christian or a church, especially one that lives in an ever-changing world, an unstable world, the last thing we need to do is to be sending mixed and confusing messages, as well as without, which I cannot be supported by the word of God. Thank God. For the spirit of prophecy. But you better believe God would have told you the same thing whether Ellen White was here or not. With all due respect to the prophetess. And she was a woman. Hello fellas, she was a woman. If you understand something about God, he does not discriminate when it comes to the gospel. Thank you ladies who said amen. We got some, we got some work to do. I'm going to talk to your pastor after I leave. In the book of Revelation 3.15, one of the churches mentioned in that context was so unstable and unpredictable it made God sick. Throwing up is not pretty. Feeling unwell is not pretty. If God gets sick of his church, then what happens to us? I made God sick this week because I'm a sinner. Saved by grace. There was a time when I thought all the hair that I had on my head, and brother, you can, you, you, you and I are brothers, we're going to talk later. <laughs> I don't care what you lose in this life. The wonderful thing about this, this is easy to maintain. And don't cost money. And when you shine it, it looks pretty. <laughs> Amen. Some of you are getting there, but never mind, your day will come. God says, I wish instead that you were either hot or cold, but you're lukewarm, deceptive, unpredictable, unreliable, and on top of all of that, 
dangerous. Life becomes truly balanced when our priorities are God's and not ours. Mighty quiet out there. Process it, if you will. The third thing I want to talk about the coin. The coin tells us its origin. It has no problem telling you where it came from, its roots, its beginning, its nationality. So too is our lives. I happen to have been born in London, England, to Caribbean parents. One of my grandfathers was Italian, one of my grandmothers was Indian, and the others ended up on the small island called Jamaica, and I am mixed up. <laughs> so I'm not quite sure what you're going to see this morning, but pray for me. It is said that if you don't know where you're coming from, it's likely you won't know where you're going to. Last time I checked, God put his fingers in some dirt. And here we are. So don't be too proud of where you came from or what you came out of. Because if God can use dirt to make human beings in his image, Lord have mercy. Those of you who got an ego problem, you need Jesus. Let me say that again. God, I don't know if you've heard that. I don't care what your dirt looks like, what you put on it, what you put in it. At the end of the day, and I know this, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Hello. It is said if we don't know where we're coming from, it's likely we won't know where we're going to. Some of us have a problem with who we are or what we are because someone has a problem with it. There are many who are experiencing an identity crisis. When I found out who Jesus was, I was happy. Because you can't tell me what he has not already told you. You're special. Turn around to the person, and look at them, and even if you didn't say it this morning, tell them you're special because God made you special. Do it right now. Say something nice today on the Sabbath. Some of you still are. Mm. We need to pray for them. Amen. Some of us are experiencing an identity crisis. There are many wannabes out there in the world trying to be everyone else. Some of them even think they're God. The only culture that matters is where we see people as God's people and not where we came from and treat them accordingly. Yes, I am making a point because I have been guilty of that too. Hello? Some folks are hung up upon where you came from. Which church did you belong to? Or where it's going? There are people who will never let you forget and want you to be ashamed just because they feel better about it. The last time I checked, God stooped down in the dirt with his knees, got his fingernails messed up. He had clean hands. Here we are. As we say in the African community, here we is. How many of you are still is here? One, two, three. If you're not sure you're here, something's wrong. <laughs> Jesus had the same problem when he met Philip. Philip couldn't understand that any good thing could have come out of this church. Where did you say he came from? Bethlehem? I understand his mother wasn't really married. And she had this baby. Go on. And he is who he thinks he is? <laughs> Nathaniel. Ask the question, can any good thing come out of Tucson? Hello? Come out of London? I can answer that question very, very well. Or well, wherever it is you came out from or out up from, Nathaniel asks a solid question. 
But then when Nathaniel meets, meets Jesus, the Bible declares, he said, Rabbi, you are the son of God. So please don't get hung up on where you came from. Be thankful that God found you, put his arms around you, and you're still sitting here even though we don't deserve him. Hello, somebody. As long as we know our connection to God, where we've come from and where we're going, just like the coin, it tells you where it's come from. I've never heard a coin say, I am not an American. <laughs> Jamaican. Italian. I'm not sure where I came from, but I know it's somewhere. What's important is not is where you came who you came from, and why you came from here. So it's important for us to remember that on the coin of our lives in Christ, number one, we must have substance. Number two, balance. Number three, origin. And a future with Jesus. How many of you got a future with Jesus? Amen. I know I have. Amen. Short as I am, I got a future. <laughs> and when Jesus comes back, you're going to see 15 talk with here and everything else. <laughs> Brother, it's going to get better. better. Trust me. We move on. The fourth thing, if you look on your coin, you will see an inscription on there. I can barely see mine. It bears an inscription or an image. Some of you are looking at me and not looking at your coins. Come on, let's be honest. I can see everything here. Thank God I don't know your name. You will see that it has an image of a person or an animal or a symbol. This tells you something about the importance of its, its significance. So too do our lives bear certain inscriptions. Hello? Significant things. Marks, characteristics, traits inherited and learned. You don't know who you are until you marry somebody. She's been with me 33 years. And I, the number 33, in the, in the, you know exactly how long Jesus was here. Okay, I hope that this good woman still stays with me. To 34. Some of you have been around a little longer and wondering why. But thank God he's merciful. Thank God he's got a sense of humor, but he's serious too. Is that right? Okay. It says billions of dollars are spent on health and fitness. Everybody trying to get the Barbie doll, Barbie doll figure, or used to be Arnold, physique. And you see folks walking around like clones, as it, were, as it were, and they appear to look good. You know the type, body by Nautilus, brain by Mattel. Look good, walk good. Puff their chest up like they got something to show. Ain't nothing in between the ears. Hello? We've seen them. Some of us used to be like that back in the day. Then there are those who are filled with the church and its teachings, but whose lives are empty of the transforming power knowledge and character of Christ. I don't want any of us to believe that we've got it made. That we are so special in our own sight. God's already told you that. We just got to be a little humble. We just got to be more like Jesus. I have naturally have a bad temper. A really bad temper that I can confess this, not because I'm proud of it, but I got a bad temper. Do I have any company? Don't lie, because God will God, God, God say something to you. Amen. I've got a bad temper. Short, but bad temper. Pray for it. It's better than it was. But Lord have mercy, I wouldn't want to meet me. And I'm five foot four. And my brother over there, I certainly wouldn't want to meet him. Yes, you in the blue with the, with the uh, glasses. Can you just stand up a minute? Are you sure? You're taller than me? Okay, so that's what that, that's matter. Thank you very much. He's not very tall. <laughs> Come on. After we are told, 
When we look at the coin of our lives, some of us think that we are the cosmic center of the world and behave like that. And that they got internal powers and some people believe that. But when we look at the coin of our lives, we would do well to ask ourselves the same question that Jesus asked, found in Mark 12, verse 16, when he was shown a coin, and you know the eye, you know the story behind that, and he asked, whose inscription is this? That's a heavy-duty question. Whose inscription does Kingsley have? I want that one to sink in. After probation closes and Jesus comes again soon, having spent time with the holy, in the holy place in heaven, interceding for our behalf, looking at how we have spent the coin of our lives, he will not repeat this question. Who are you? Because who you are, or as they say in the black community, is who you will be at that time. It's going to close. Like it, or ready or not, it will close. Some who are no longer here, it's closed. Some who are walking around here, it's closing. And there are some that are living, it's already closed, they just don't know it. The solid foundation of God stands having this seal, for the Lord knows those who are his. And let everyone who names the name of Christ, according to 2 Timothy 2.19, depart from the word used is iniquity. Now there's sin, there's evil, but iniquity is sin and evil on steroids. Man, you real bad. You messed up. But God can save from the uttermost to the godmost. Amen, somebody. I said, amen, somebody. Amen. You ain't living witness sitting here today that God has done something special for you, then you missed something. Maybe we need to tell them. God, please, 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 right? Amen. Remind them nicely. Don't bang them over the head. What's wrong with you? That's not going to work. All right, number five. If you look in the coin again, take a look at it. I want you to look at yourself. i got two more to go, so bear with me. And I've come a long way at short notice, so here we are. <laughs> yes, Orville, bow your head. Number five. There are seven altogether. Look at the coin once again, and you will discover yet another remarkable feature, which is you. That is its date. Okay, this one is so dark I can't even see it. Okay, what's the date on your coin, brother? I can't see it. When you get that old, where people can't see your date, there's something wrong. 1993. Come on, who else? 96? 2016? Oh, okay. Give me that in the back. 2011. 2011. Oh, someone, he's got a coin that was. Built within this century. 2005. 2005. He got you beat by six years. In many non-Western cultures, listen to this, keep a look at it. Every day, even today, age and wisdom are qualities that are, val that are valued and held in high esteem in some cultures. There's an intrinsic beauty and awe in moving on and looking older, a kind of health or respect that used to be around. Unfortunately, the opposite is true in our culture. Let that sink in for a minute. We don't care and we're not bothered even though our elderly are living much longer, but the quality of life is not commensurate with their safety, their protection, and their preservation. I'm talking to the younger folk here. Hello? You didn't get here by yourself. You are not here by yourself, for yourself. And there's some older folk who treat younger people much the same way. Can I be honest with you? Do we live in the real world? 
We don't care, we're not bothered even though people are living longer. The date on the coin tells you how long it's been around, but there are some coins that have been around for some time and they may be older and they may look good in Jesus, in some cases better than their age. And I'm thankful for God. I'm going to share a confession. I just turned 63. Somebody said amen. Thank you so very much. The rest of you all, we're going to pray for you. Just turned 63. I don't have the afro, but it's okay. I'm not worried about it. I always, you always get back up in church. That's the one thing I love about church. There are those who look good in Jesus. They have the blessing of God in their lives. And he gives them a degree of youthfulness and vigor. I sometimes think that if God does not allow some of our, us older folks to hang around a little longer, this church, this planet will be messed up. Oh, I know, all, all the young folk are, are big, they're quiet now. Now, if I preach a little longer than you're used to, I came a long way not to preach a swap sermon. I was okay until 24 hours ago. Now you got me. There are some co coins, however, that have been around for a long time, and you can see it either because life has been hard, the battle tough, they're still fighting, and we still, young people, need to take care of them. Some of us, we have youth. I'm not slamming the young people, but let me tell you something. You didn't get to where you are by an accident. We all have an obligation, and it goes the other way too. However, there are coins who for all the time they've been around, instead of becoming softer, sweeter, nicer in Jesus, instead have become tough, hardened, bigoted, old stumbling blocks that hinder themselves and others from knowing Christ. I've met some people like that. And I pray if I hit 64 or beyond, I want to be sweet and nice, not old and soft. And you don't have to be old to be sour. Huh? You don't have to be old to be ridiculously crazy. I, I got to leave here, in, hopefully in one piece, when I'm done. <laughs> but there are coins before all the time they've been here. Thanks to Jesus, have become softer, sweeter, nicer in Jesus instead of tough. And the opposite, Paul tells us in Titus 2, 2 and 3, Older men and women, be temperate, dignified, respectable, and reverent in behavior. And someone said, there ain't no fool like an old fool. <laughs> and there ain't no fool like a younger one trying to be a fool, doesn't think he's a fool or she's a fool, but you are. Please don't look guilty. Ladies, pay attention, I'm watching you. That's the one thing about you can stand up and be seen, you know? Almost done. But it doesn't stop there. There are coins whose dates are more recent, young as they are. They look shiny and attractive and beautiful. However, some have given themselves their coins of their lives and invested themselves there are those who are trying to live useful and productive lives. And their contemporaries are giving them a hard time. If you're in college or university or school, stay being who you are. Because somebody is going to be watching, somebody is going to be looking, someone is going to be paying attention, and you'd be surprised at how much influence and impact you've got. You are dangerous to the devil. Hello. What did I say? Again? To whom? He don't like you? He don't care for you? He, he wants you to occupy the warm place with him. And you are capable enough in 2021 to be as bad as you are good. In Jesus. Let me contextualize. Some of you are preaching in here. 
And he said something this time to the other. So I want to clear the air. Plus, I want lunch. <laughs> there are many of us who are consumers, not producers. We take more than we give. We know everything about nothing. We want to change the world, but we don't have the ability to change our minds. Hello? Putting their libidos where their heads should be. These coins think they've arrived not knowing that they never really left. And I don't care what age you are. They believe that they're on their way, all dressed up, going everywhere, but getting nowhere even faster. I've heard it said there's no fool like an old fool. And a young one is just as bad. The sad thing about it is some of us never reach maturity and last to become something worthwhile because we, few, we refuse to listen to advice. I know what I'm talking about. I didn't get to 63 by being smart, well behaved. And if you're thinking that I don't have issues right now, I do. But thank God for Jesus. Amen, somebody. To 1 Timothy 4.12, let no one despise you because you are young. Be an example to believers. Proverbs 4.13, listen, O son, listen, O son, to fatherly instruction. Pay attention and you will gain wisdom. In nothing such as beautiful as a young person. We got our issues. We've got our faults. But when God is in your life, you are smarter, you are better, and you have a little bit more peace. Amen. Amen, somebody. Oh, I'm getting up for I'm in your face today. I didn't come all this way just to smile and say happy, but whatever. I'm here. Blame the one who invited me. Whether you're old or you're young, it's immaterial what you're or unimportant to God. What matters to him is not how long you live, but how well. Thank you, someone was listening. Let me repeat that again. It's not how long you live, it is how well. Amen. In Jesus. Let me contextualize that because some folks will say, Pastor said something else. If we God, give God quality down here, he's promised, according to John 14, 1 through 3, everlasting quantity. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house, and I've got mine staked out already. Here's a mansion. You all can come on over if you like. If you don't get there, well, I'm just, I'm just we're going to have a party anyway. But I'm hoping that everybody will be there. How many of you planning to be there? How many of you plan to walk those streets of God? How many of you get so, get so excited? You never made that much noise in church, but you're in heaven. Yay! Hello, I got somebody here that's going to be in heaven. The rest of you all, I don't know about you all. I'm getting, I'm, I'm getting tired now, so I better finish. Friends, we must understand that, is the horizon, that it is the horizontal, horizontal commitment that ensures the vertical reward. Amen. That kind of sounds nice, doesn't it? But it is. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. You have invested well with the coin of your life. Now enter into the joy of your Lord. Repeat after me, my life, my life is like a coin. I can spend it anyway because it's got substance, balance, origin, and inscription. And it also has a date. In eternity, there's no such thing as dates. Hello? How many of you are planning? I've got two more to go through. I know I kept you long, but I wanted to make sure you got your money's worth. <laughs> you got your time. You got everything else. You might be mad at me, but I still love you. Because I'm going to eat with you in a minute. Two more. Can you handle two more? Yes. Okay. No one's going anywhere except lunch. Number six. Besides the date, the coin tells you how much it is worth. Is that right? Yes. What do you got, sir?
You got quarters. How many of you got pennies? Let me see. Don't feel like God don't love you because he still does. How many of you got quarters? Dimes. Am I missing any? Nickels. nickels. How many nickels? I don't want anyone not to be saved in heaven. Okay. But guess what? <laughs> so to his life. It doesn't matter to God whether you're young, old, poor, or short. I like that drug. Fat or thin, educated or not. In heaven's economy, every coin is manufactured and placed into circulation. I know of places and in some churches where it may not be publicly accepted or outwardly condoled, condoned, it is still privately regarded that not all men, even in church, are created to be equal. we got to get over that. Or we will not see Jesus because Jesus is not going to have someone like that walking around for eternity. That is cruel and unusual punishment. Don't look at anybody else. Look at me. Okay? You can do that after sunset. It's easy to say that we are one in Christ. And Christ is sees us that way, but some have a difficult time accepting that person that looks different, that thinks different, that behaves different. And it goes beyond the things that you already know. We've confused social opportunities and external achievements with a person's intrinsic value. Huh? If God did that for every one of us, most of us would not be sitting in this room right now. Amen? Yeah. We have confused social opportunities. And we measure people ba based upon what they have or they don't have. Thank God we don't serve a God like that. Amen. I heard anything from this side. Huh? Amen. Okay. I'm making sure you wait. This is one sermon you're going to listen to. And when the pastor comes back, I hope you do the same thing next week. Almost done. If you look at a coin that you have in your pockets, have you ever heard them complaining, I'm only a penny, but I'm mingling with a quarter? Hmm? I shouldn't be here because I'm not 10 cents. I can't hear anything. But we have issues with that. Yes? Come on, let's be honest. True. Let me tell you something. You know, God, don't even get, don't even worry about that. He's just glad you're in the same place with everybody else. Amen, somebody. Hello? God forbid it, or we all people didn't get into heaven. There would be no shine in the place. Hello? I got you. You're, you're getting there. That's okay. God doesn't do that. God doesn't matter what others tell you your worth. Tell you. Your worth with Jesus means that he came from heaven. Mingled for 33 years. Hung out with some of the most incredibly ridiculous guys. And all of us can identify with them. And fishermen on top of that. And they weren't the most beautifully oratorical people, like some of us were. Still a minute? Okay. Give it to Jesus. Don't be looking at anybody else but forward. Thank you. God's talking to you. So thank God that everybody has worth. Did you hear what I said? Worth. Let me hear you say it. Worth. We have value. value. We're in, we, we are lovable. Lovable. Acceptable. Acceptable. God, that we serve is ridiculously crazy about each and every one of us. Amen. All right. Promise you're short. The sermon was long. You've got to fix this up. Though they tell me, thank God he doesn't think like we do. Amen. Finally, hold your coin out one more time. Don't, don't put it in your pocket. Not 
you will find out that some coins are shiny. Some, this thing is so dark. Can you make out what that is? It was an old penny, but it, you know, it's not clean. How many of you got a clean coin? Oh, you, you got blessed today. It the coin wants us to remember that it is made out of a substance that was built to last. Huh? Adam and Eve were never supposed to die. God made them so that they would last. But we know the opposite is true. And a wonderful thing, they tell me, whether it's, wherever it's the, they, they make coins, Sometimes they get dark. Sometimes life is difficult with them. Sometimes they've got chips. Sometimes they've got defects. Is there anyone in here without a defect? No. But yet God does something with us in spite of our condition, in spite of our economic standing, in spite of everything else. He loves us passionately. Amen. Hello. He loves us. He's so crazy, it's not funny. With everything, that's your brain. I can serve a God like that. Amen. I'm serving a God like that. I'm mingling with people with them and everything that I talked about and some more. And we're still here in love with Jesus and in love with each other. Amen. Repeat after me one more time. Oh, God, I tell you. Here's the beauty. When that coin is no longer recognizable, <coughs> they take it out of circulation. And they redo it. Remit it. And boy, when you see it, it looks bright and beautiful. That is what the plan of salvation is all about. Amen. Oh, I had a week, man. Come on. Amen. 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 Let's try that again. My life <laughs> is like this coin. Like All right. It may come in different shapes and sizes. It may come in different shapes and sizes. But God knows how much I work. But God knows how much I work. Let's pray. There are the Father in heaven this morning. We have heard something that we had in our pockets, first books, that we will never forget. Thank you for being the God who loves us, not because of, but in spite of. Amen. Thank you that when we are discolored, beaten up, unrecognizable, ridiculously crazy, you still love us. Amen. Thank you. But for those who are not, no longer living, you promise to come again. You promise that when you blow that trumpet. Yes, there will be new submission to heaven. God says that the dead in Christ shall rise first, and we, who are alive will, and remain, will be caught up with no defects, no shortcomings, nothing that stops us from coming together and being together. And we'll just see. And he'll say, hey, you've been faithful. Now I'm going to make you ruler over everything. There's no one in the universes around a made in the image of God like us. Thank you for salvation. Thank you for saving us. Thank you for still working with us. But we know time is short. So bless us as we, these coins in this church and elsewhere Walk out of those doors knowing that you love them not because of you love us in spite of and you will do anything 
But the time ends for that to allow us to become a community from earth to heaven. We thank you, we bless you, we honor you, and we praise you. Let the check say, Amen. Amen.